Congratulations on your purchase of the Eastwood TIG 200 welder. You'll appreciate working with a unit that brings affordable, pro-quality TIG GTAW welding to anyone who works with aluminum or who wants precise welding of thinner gauge materials up to a quarter inch thick. Your machine setup starts with the ground connection. When connecting the pedal, connect the 4 pin black plastic connector and the 2 pin metal connector to the front panel. Next, connect the hose from the TIG torch gas hose to the front of the unit. Be sure not to over tighten the threaded brass fitting. To set up the regulator, use a wrench to thread the regulator's large male brass fitting into the argon tank. The gauge on the left reads the shielding's gas output, while the gauge on the right reads the tank pressure. Now it's time to select the proper tungsten. Use the settings reference chart to determine which tungsten is suggested for the material you'll be welding. The basic options are pure tungsten, in green for aluminum, or foriated in red for steels. Check your own welding reference book or ask an experienced welder to determine the uses for other types of tungsten. It's necessary to sharpen your tungsten before using it so that the arc can be more focused on your workpiece. Always sharpen on a dedicated grinding wheel and sharpen in a parallel direction to the wheel. If you would sharpen perpendicular to the wheel, you'd have problems with the arc wandering on the workpiece. The sharpened point should be around two and a half times the diameter of the electrode. The first step in the torch assembly is to remove the back cap from the torch. Then slide the collet out of the torch. The collet size should match your electrode diameter size. Insert the tungsten into the collet and put the collet back into the torch body. Reinstall the back cap to lock the tungsten in place. Always make sure the tungsten produces 1 8 to 1 quarter inch beyond the torch cup. It may also be necessary to change the collet body to match the electrode diameter. Do this by first removing the cup and exposing the collet body. This brass body is threaded in. Simply remove it and replace with the correct size for the tungsten being used. It's important to take into account the material you'll be welding and its thickness before setting up your machine since different materials and thicknesses require different configurations. Refer to the suggested settings chart to determine the appropriate machine settings for your particular job. Next, choose AC or DC current via the rocker switch on the front panel. Using the reference chart, set up your amp control knob on the front panel. Amps are listed as a range since the number of amps will vary depending on two things, what type of joint you will be welding, as well as your technique. When using the switch on the torch to start the arc, the amperage needs to be set on the front panel of the unit. The switch on the torch is not variable like the pedal is, so it should be dialed in to the specific amperage and tested on a test piece first. When using the pedal to control the amperage, set the amps using the knob on the side of the pedal. The amount of pedal depression will control the amperage at the torch. The switch on the front panel also needs to be set to foot pedal. Select the tungsten type and size and install into the TIG torch. Pre-gas controls how much gas flows before the arc starts. This is controlled using the knob on the front panel. Choose a value based on the suggested settings chart. The post-gas controls how much gas flows after the arc stops. This is also controlled using the knob on the front panel. Choose a value based on the suggested settings chart. 
The clearance effect controls the balance of the heat in the torch compared to the heat in the base metal. A welding helmet is required when doing TIG welding. We highly recommend that the shade be number 11 or darker. Using a helmet with an auto darken feature will make welding much easier. High quality leather welding gloves should be worn to protect your skin, not only from conductive heat burns, but also from UV emissions. A flame proof welding jacket is recommended to protect you from accidental burns. To begin laying a bead, start the arc and get a puddle going. When welding steel, it's easy to see the molten puddle form. Aluminum welding is different and will be discussed later. Once the puddle is formed, you can begin adding filler wire and moving forward to create the weld bead. To finish the bead, add a last bit of filler and using the pedal, slowly back off to avoid a crater in the weld. Once the arc has seized, hold the torch over the weld allowing the post gas to flow to avoid contamination to the weld and allow the tungsten to cool. After getting the machine set up and practicing laying a bead on scrap metal, you can move on to welding actual joints. Here we are welding a Mustang 2 strut support from Paul Horton's welder series. Different joints will require different techniques, so do some research before starting. Now we'll work on welding aluminum. Following the suggestions in the reference chart, set the pre-flow, amps on the pedal or panel, post-flow, clearance effect, foot panel control and set to AC power. Prior to welding on aluminum, the surface must be prepped using either a stainless steel scratch brush or a dedicated flap disc on an angle grinder. When welding aluminum, the sharpened point on the tungsten will form into a ball once an arc is ignited. This ball can be formed on scrap metal or at the beginning of the weld. Your technique should include a motion similar to when welding steel but you must get a shiny puddle formed before moving forward. With aluminum, it's harder to tell when the metal has melted. After getting the machine set up and practicing laying a bead on scrap aluminum, you can move on to welding actual joints. The two pieces should first be tacked together to help avoid warping and to prevent the parts from moving as you weld. Here we are welding a bracket onto an aluminum radiator. Different joints require different techniques, so do some research before attempting. Thanks again for your purchase of the Eastwood TIG 200 welder. I hope this brief video helped explain how to get up and running with your new welder. We're looking forward to seeing your results soon.